to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin. This is the gospel of Christ to proclaim good news unto the poor. The gospel of Christ, spreading the soul-saving message of Jesus. And now, Ben Bailey. This is the gospel of Christ. Be sober, be vigilant, for your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion seeking those whom he may devour. 1 Peter 5, verse number 8. We welcome you today to our study of Satan, the enemy of God and the enemy of man. Today we're going to be thinking about the nature of Satan, what he's like, and what his ultimate goals are. And as always, we want to encourage you to locate your Bible, have it ready, as we're going to look to the Word of God in our study today. We're so glad that you've joined us for our study. We want you to know that today's broadcast is being brought to you by individual Christians and members of the Lord's Church in your area. The Church of Christ would love for you to stop by and visit their assembly. Whether that be on Sunday morning or Sunday night, you'll find friendly, Wednesday night, you'll find friendly people there who love God, who are concerned about souls, and who'd be happy to sit down and study the Word of God with you. If you've got a Bible question, you'd like to know more about God's Word or the church or the plan of salvation, You'll find people in the Lord's Church who'd love to just study God's Word and come to a better understanding of that with you. And so we encourage you to visit the Lord's Church in your area. Also, here at the Gospel of Christ, we'd love to help you in your journey to know God better. You can visit us on our website, thegospelofchrist.com. From that, you can access all our video lessons, audio lessons, written materials, study questions, transcripts, just a wide variety of good Bible study material, and it's all available to you free of charge. In fact, if you'd like to have a copy of this series on Satan, whether that be in video or audio, we'd be glad to make that available to you. You can go to our website, uh, fill out our media request form, and from there we can send that to you as a digital download, or if you need an actual hard copy on DVD or CD, we'll send that to you in the mail free of charge as well. And friend, we want to encourage you in our fast-paced world today where everybody's got a smartphone to download the Gospel of Christ app. All our information is available there. You can sign up for updates and notifications of new videos and things like that. And so it's a great way to study the Word of God in this fast-paced world today. In this series of lessons, our aim is to better equip Christians, better equip us to know who Satan is, to know what he's like and what his nature is, and ultimately to know the methods he uses to try to cause each of us to fall and ultimately to be lost. And so today we're beginning by thinking about the origin and nature of Satan. And when we talk about the origin, there are indeed some things that we may not know exactly, but uh, there are also some things that we can infer from Scripture, which will lead us to some pretty good uh, information as well. And so as it relates to the origin of Satan, here's what we definitely know. Scripture does not go into great detail and a lot of specifics on the history and background of Satan and his origin. We're just not told a whole lot of detail on that. However, there are a few things that we can uh, put together logically from Scripture that lead us to some pretty valid and sound conclusions. As it relates to Satan's origin, there are just three options, only three. Either Satan has always existed and he is eternal, or he's never existed and he's just kind of the figurative personification of evil. Or the third option, Satan was created by God and somewhere along the way he turned evil. And so let's explore those three options as it relates to Satan's origin. Is the enemy, is the devil, is Satan eternal like God? Well, friend, what we learn from the Bible is 
Only God is eternal. Psalm 90 verses 1 and 2 says of God, From everlasting to everlasting you are God. When I take and put Satan in that category of the eternal, that puts him in the class of a divine being of God. And friends, Satan is not God. Now, think about this with me. If we understand God correctly, we can pretty see pretty well that Satan is not on the class with God. Let's illustrate it this way. God is, because he is an eternal divine being, God is not limited in his power and his ability. Luke 1 verse 37, with God, nothing is impossible. Genesis 17, 1, he is the almighty, all-powerful God. And so God has no limits. His power is not limited. His ability is not limited. He can do anything. Job chapter 42, verse 2 would say. Now, does Satan fit into that class? Well, of course not. Satan is limited by God in what he can do. Uh, Job 1 verse 12, God says to Satan, only don't touch his flesh. You can do anything to Job you want, don't take his life. Friend, if you're a God, people don't tell you that. Go other beings don't tell you that. God cannot be limited, and yet Satan was limited by God in what he was allowed or permitted to do by the Almighty. And so Satan, even in that scenario, and there are others, was limited by Almighty God. In the Bible, we learn that God is all-powerful. Jeremiah 32, verse 17, He is all-powerful, abundant, and able to do anything that He wants to think or ask. And yet Satan... He doesn't have that, that all-powerful nature. Satan is less powerful than God. How do we know that? Listen to 1 John 4, verse 4. He, God, God says, the Bible says this to Christians. He who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. And so God is greater than and more powerful than Satan, and God will, Satan will ultimately be defeated, and he's powerless to resist that. How do we know that? Notice the words of Revelation chapter 20 and verse number 10. Revelation 20 verse 10 says, The devil who deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are, and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. And so Satan, he, he, he's less powerful than God. God's greater than him. And ultimately, he's going to be defeated, and he has no power to resist that. And so God isn't limited in his ability and power. God's all-powerful. Satan is not. Everything in the Bible is in submission to and under God and His control. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 27, the whole creation is under the control of Almighty God. And yet in the New Testament, Jesus was able in the first century to bind Satan and plunder his goods. Uh, when you see Jesus casting out demons, and he begins to speak on that idea, and he talks about the strong man. And he says, you don't enter the strong man's house and bind him unless you're stronger than him in essence showing that these demons were workers of Satan and Jesus had the power to overcome them because he had power over that one who was strong. And so everything in the Bible is under God's control and its submission to him. In the first century, Satan was under the control and his servants and himself were in submission to Jesus and his power. You see, in the Bible, God's purposes can't be thwarted. Job chapter 42, verse 2, nothing that God does can be stopped. No purpose of yours, Job says, no purpose of yours can be withheld from you. If God wants it, God desires it, it's going to happen. It cannot be stopped. Now, you contrast that with Satan. Satan and his plan can be resisted and can be overcome by Christians. James 4 verse 7, 1 Peter 5 verse 9, resist him steadfast in the faith. In fact, 
In reality, Satan has already failed. Jesus, through death, overcame him by the power of death and released those who all their lifetime were subject to bondage. And so, back to the big idea for just a moment. Satan, if we say Satan's eternal, we have some big problems with that because only God is eternal. His power and ability are not limited. He is all-powerful. Everything in His submission to Him and His purposes cannot be stopped. When we line that up against Satan, in every one of those categories, we can clearly see he doesn't meet that criteria. And so the first option, Satan is eternal. He's always existed, placing him right up there with God. Friend, you can clearly see in the scripture that just doesn't meet the test, the guideline, uh, the litany test there. Secondly, as an option for the origin of Satan, many people will say that Satan is not really a real spiritual being. He's the personification of evil. Friend, there are just too many personal names, personal references, and appearances of Satan in Scripture to claim he is just personification. He's what we call evil. There's just too many personal attachments that we find in the Bible that, and examples that show he is real. For example, he's called the adversary Satan. Luke chapter 22, verse 31, get behind me, Satan. He is called the devil, uh, Diablos devil. 1 Peter 5, verse 8, be sober, be vigilant. Your adversary, the devil, walks about right, like a roaring lion. He's described as the evil one in Mark chapter 3, verse 22, and in Matthew chapter 13. But uh, above and beyond the names he carries that show his personal nature, their appearance of him in the Bible, which clearly set him apart as not just a personification of evil, but a real spiritual being. Think about a couple of those with me. In Matthew chapter 4, at the temptation of Christ, Jesus is taken into the wilderness. He is there for 40 days. He is uh, in a great time of, of distress, duress, we might say. And Satan comes to him at his weakest moment, and he tempts him. If you're the Son of God, command these stones to become bread. That's not just the personification of evil. If you're the Son of God, cast yourself down from the temple. All these things I'll give you if you fall down and worship me. Friend, we're not talking about falling down and worshiping the personification of evil or evil itself speaking there. We're talking about a real evil spiritual being who approached Jesus at his temptation. Job's temptation does not present him, present him as a personification of evil either. Job 1 verse 6, there's a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before God, and Satan came also. And God and Satan spoke there. They had a, they had a, a conversation, and, and Satan made requests, and Satan asked certain things, and, and, and that's a real story, not just a personification of evil. In the garden, when Satan came to Adam and Eve as that slithery serpent in the garden, we're not just a, that's not just a personification of evil. That's Satan working in the means and ways in which he does. And so we would count out the idea that Satan is eternal. The Scripture, because he doesn't meet the qualifications of the divine. We see in the Scripture too many personal names and personal appearances just to say he's what we call evil. Well, what option is there then left for Satan's origin? Friend, I would think as you look in Scripture, the only other option of the three we've presented today is Satan was created by God as good and as useful as one of his servants, and he went bad somewhere along the way. If Satan's not God, and if he is real, the only other option is he is a created being of God. Scripture affirms that God created all things, and without him there's nothing made that was made or that exists. Let, let me reference a couple of passages for you. John chapter 1, I want you to notice what Jesus said or what is said about the Lord in John chapter 1. Listen to verse number 3 with me. The Word was in the beginning with God, 
all things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. Colossians 1.16, again, confirms the same idea. All things were made by him, through him, and for him. And so anything that is created was created by God. Scripture affirms that all things God made were originally made good. Genesis 1 verse 31, God looks at, at all of His creation, and he, at the end of every day He'll say it's good, but in chapter 1 verse 31, God saw that it was very good. 1 Timothy 4, 4 verse 4, uh, all things were made by God for good. There's nothing evil that God made. That, that's just not in the nature of God. And so God created all things. Scripture affirms God made all things originally good. But here's what we also know. Human beings, people, me and you, we have a free will and we can choose what decisions we make in this life and what we do, right? John 7 verse 17 uh, Jesus there, as he thinks about this idea, says we've got to choose. We've got to choose to do God's will. Joshua 24, verse 15, Joshua puts the burden on the people of Israel. Choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve. And so as human beings created good by God, we can make choices. We have the option to choose right and to do good, or we can choose evil and do bad. God made man upright, Ecclesiastes chapter 7 teaches us, but man can also make bad choices. Now, here's why we say that. Spiritual beings, beings that God created that are in the spiritual realm, they also have a free will and can choose to do good, and follow God or to do evil. How do we know that? Look at a couple of passages with me. Look at Luke chapter 8. I want you to see from the Bible that spiritual beings who have been created by God also have a free will and choices to make. Look in Luke chapter 8, verse 32. This is the context of the demoniac who is possessed by the many demons. And I want you to see here that the demons chose something here. They could make a choice. Luke chapter 8, verse 32. Now a herd of many swine was feeding there on the mountain, so they begged Jesus that He would permit them to enter them, and Jesus permitted them. They realized they're kind of at a crossroads here. What's going to happen to us? So they make a choice and they request that of Jesus. Just trying to help us to see that demons are not robots. They have choices. Spiritual beings have choices they can make just like us today. Probably one of the clearest passages to show this relates to God's servant beings in the spiritual realm who we will sometimes refer to as angels. Look in your Bible in Jude verse 6 and I want you to see that demons do or spiritual beings do have a choice and some of them have made choices that are not right. Jude verse 6, And the angels who did not keep their proper domain, but left their own abode, he has reserved in everlasting chains under darkness for the judgment of the great day. When you think about these spiritual beings, whether it be demons, angels, Satan, the cherubim, the seraphim, whatever it may be, we're not talking about mindless robots who have to do whatever, who have no choice and are just programmed to do so. These individuals, these spiritual beings can choose things. They have choices. They have the ability to think. They have the ability to, to, to see different options. And Jude 6 clearly teaches some of them who didn't keep their proper domain, who didn't do what God said, implied from that is they chose not to are being held in chains of everlasting darkness. And so these beings were created by God for His purposes, administering servants. Some of them made bad choices. And so here's what we can know today. If Scripture affirms, and it does, that God created all things and nothing exists that was not made by Him, John 1 verse 3 and Colossians 1 verse 16, and if Scripture affirms that all things God created were originally made good, Genesis 1 verse 31, 
1 Timothy 4, verse 4, if humans have a free will and if spiritual beings have a free will, then friend, the conclusion we would come to is this. Satan is a spiritual being created by God for good who chose to do evil and is now the ruler or the king of the demons, Mark chapter 3, verse 22, and he is the force of evil and darkness in this world. Ephesians chapter 6, verse number 12. And again, while we're not told a whole lot about his origin and uh, things related to that, these do seem to be logical conclusions we can come to based off of the Scriptures. Now, as it relates to Satan, let's think a little bit, apart from his origin, let's think a little bit about his nature for just a moment. I want to help us understand who Satan is. We want to define Satan using the Scripture. And so, what do we know about Satan? First, we can know Satan is a personal, wicked spiritual being. How do we know that? I want to encourage you to look in your Bible with me in Ephesians chapter 6, and we're going to look together in verses 10 through 12. Satan is a personal, evil, wicked spiritual being. The Bible says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God. Why? That you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principles principalities, against powers, the rulers of the darkness of this age, against the spiritual host of wickedness in the heavenly places. He is a, a personal being, the devil. He is a spiritual being. We're not wrestling against flesh and blood, but against the spiritual host of wickedness in the heavenly places. And so he's a personal, wicked, spiritual being. The Bible also defines him as a for lack of a better word, a world power and a force of darkness today. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 4 describes him as a god of this world, the one who the people of this world are serving and worshiping. Uh, the majority of the world is following him. He is described as the ruler of this world. John chapter 12 verse 31. He's described in Ephesians 2 verse 2 as the prince of the power of the air. Again, this doesn't mean he's stronger than God or more powerful than God. It just shows his power, his influence, the force of darkness, and how the majority of God's people of his creation have followed the wrong one, Satan himself. And so he is a world power and a force of darkness today. What else do we know about Satan's nature? Satan is the adversary of God. He is the enemy of Almighty God. Job chapter 1 and in Job chapter 2, Satan also appeared with God when the sons of God came. What does the word Satan mean? The word Satan means adversary. He wants to destroy. Satan is not more powerful than God. We understand that. If he were, Satan would have already destroyed. He's not. But here's what we do know. As an enemy of God, Satan at every opportunity is thwarting, is disrupting, and is causing problem for God's plan and God's creation. He won't win in the end, but as God's enemy, he is set to do as much harm along the way as he can. And so he's the, he, he, he's the adversary of God, the enemy of God. He hates God. Satan also is the adversary of man. 1 Peter 5, 8, listen to it. Be sober. Be vigilant. Why? Your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Satan wants you, and he wants me to be, he wants to devour us like a lion on the Sahara, ripping apart animals that are prey. We're the prey. Satan's the predator. He is looking to do it. He can't destroy God, therefore he wants to hurt God's most prized possession as much as he can humanity. He's the enemy of God. He's the enemy of man. But here's the good news. As the enemy of God and as the enemy of man, the Bible clearly teaches Satan will ultimately be destroyed in hell by God 
with all his angels and all his followers. Listen to Revelation chapter 20. I want us to notice verse number 10 and then verses 14 and 15. The Bible says, The devil who deceived them was cast in the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are. Listen to this. And they, the devil and his henchmen, will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Then verse 14 and 15. Then death and Hades were cast in the lake of fire. That is the second death. Anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. And so what do I know uh, about Satan's ultimate demise? He's not going to win. If I have given myself over to evil and Satan, I'm already on the losing team. Jesus has already defeated Satan. He, through death, overcame him, the power of death, who had the power of, uh, of death, and the devil released those who all their lifetime were subject to bondage. At the cross of Jesus Christ, the final death blow was given to Satan. He's trying to do as much harm between the cross and the second coming of Jesus. He's out to do as much harm, destroy as much of God's prized possession as he can. But the good news is, he won't win. If I remain faithful to God, the devil will be defeated. Here's how he's going to be defeated. Revelation 12 verse 11 says, They overcame him, the devil, by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives unto the death. If I've contacted the blood of Jesus, I've left Satan and his side, and I'm in Christ. If I overcome him by the word, the testimony, the, the, the word of God that we have today. Friend, that's going to help me to live a life that, that doesn't focus on sin. And if they don't love their lives, and if I commit myself to Jesus every day. And so the blood of Jesus, Scripture, sacrifice, the blood of Jesus, Scripture, and self-sacrifice. That's how we're going to defeat Satan today. And so, friend, we ask you today, what side are you on? Are you on the losing side, the devil's side, the side of sin? You don't want to be in that spot on the final judgment day. Are you on the side of the Lord, the winning side? Have you obeyed the gospel? Are you a Christian? If you are, then friend, each of us need to be reminded how we've got to every day work diligently to stay true to the Lord, to resist temptation, and to do what we can to overcome the devil. We hope you'll join us next time as we think more about our enemy, the devil. Today's closed captions are brought to you by Christian Family Bookstore in Chattanooga, Tennessee. We encourage you to visit thechristianfamilybookstore.com for all your Christian book needs. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the Churches of Christ with its whole aim to take the Gospel to the whole world. We do that through TV, Internet, free media, and streaming. Our motto truly is to take the whole Gospel to the whole world, and we believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious programs today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wallet. Visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials, including audio and video of our lessons. Request your copy of today's lesson by completing a media request form online. On-demand downloads are also available at thegospelofchrist.com. We would love to hear from you. Email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com or call 844 844- Six Gospel. You may also write us at the address on your screen. Search your app store for The Gospel of Christ to access our mobile app on your this smartphone. Is the gospel of Christ.